All right, guys, Zillow Flex. I have another training. one really quick. Yeah. Um, so for the weekend sleeps, um, most like uh most of the time I'm like super busy, you know, I have like open if I have open house over the weekend or I already have the Sunday or Saturday um book. Most of the weekend leads that they come from Zillow, they want to see the home right there. Um, so like, for example, last Saturday, I was with Mitch in an open house and this lead called me and she's like, hey, I want to see homes right now. I'm like, hey, you know what? The homes are not available. We can go see it tomorrow. And because I didn't I, I didn't show that day, they kind of like cost me out. They're like, no, we just want to see it today. So for the weekend leads, it's really hard. Like if you're busy and if you're book um, to like go show them, it's, it's almost kind of impossible. So that's one of the things that um, when I'm receiving a Zillow lead on the weekend, I'm, I already know that I'm book. I'm like, uh, should I receive it or not? Because I know I won't be able to show. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um, that's that's a good insight. Okay. I got a few things. So let's kick it off, guys. So Zillow Flex training today is Thursday, March 24th. And today um, we just did a survey right now with the with the group, just kind of on a handful of the hurdles and challenges that we're having with Zillow Flex, because I think there's a lot of commonalities here throughout the group. So we're going to tackle those and I'll try to go in the order that I think that makes the most sense. Um, Aaron had asked, this is a this is a quick one. Aaron had asked what the minimum conversion rate was that Zillow is looking for. Um, remember, the conversion rate. That's like saying like how much money should you make in a year, right? Like Zillow wants us to convert as high as possible, right? Like it, we should always be striving to convert at the highest level possible and continue to push that up and push that up. Um, so, you know, and that's going to vary team by team. That's going to vary agent by agent. It's going to also vary market by market because some markets there's more homes available. Some markets it's more competitive. Um, but definitely I just want to establish that your conversion rate, like, like don't compare yourself to everyone else, compare yourself to you. Like how, you know, if I get 10 leads, how many can I convert, right? 10 connections. Now Zillow does have benchmarks that they measure to see how you're measuring up to the rest of the group. So that's where they use the percent to market calculation. And basically what it is, is they, 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 look at all the analytics and all the data of all the teams in our area. And they say, okay, you know, there's 20 teams in the whole Bay area that are on Zillow flex. This team's converting at a 5%. This team's converting at a 7%. This team's at a 3%. And on average, this is kind of like the benchmark in the middle, like the average teams are converting at in our area is probably four to 5%. That's the average four to 5%. And then they're going to grade you based off how you compare to that average. So are you on par? Are you below par? Are you above par? And that's where they determine, um, you know, if they should give you more leads or less leads. So it's really they're comparing you to the other teams on how they're performing. Um, but that's not to say that there can't be agents on our team. Like let's say Aaron is like just a rock star and she's just really dialed in with, with Zillow leads and she's converting at an 8% and the team is on average at a four or 5%. Right. So um, in our area, you know, most of the teams are like four or 5%. Right. But that doesn't mean we need to be average, right. We want to be above average. So I would say we should always try to shoot for, a 10% mark. That's really the, the North star. If we can try to be close to a 10% or strive to get, you know, inch towards that 10% little by little, like if we're at 10%, we're like crushing the market. We're killing everybody else in our market. Um, and that basically means for every 10 connections that you get, you get one in contract. So if I give you 10 connections a month, you get one in contract for every 10. Does that answer your question, Aaron? Um, yeah, so they're taking the whole team percentage. It's uh, not as much like individual too. Yeah, so they it is it is based off the team, right? So you know everyone's score on our team. They take the average of that, and then it goes. It gives us the team score because Zillow Flex is really meant for teams. It's a volume type of deal, um, which is why only teams are on Zillow Flex because there's so many leads coming in. So it's really a, a, a team effort. Um, and that's why we're trying to get everyone to level up. So when we see someone who is having really 
a lot of success. That's why, you know, like we interviewed you last week to see what, what are you doing that's different from some of the other teams or what stuff is working. Um, and that's why we have these meetings every week to continually, you know, improve everybody. Um, okay, so Jerry asked the question, what happens after the initial call? Um, right, so you get the call, you answer the call, you do the whole script, you say, hey, you know, I'm, you know, we're confirmed, I'm going to confirm with the seller, you know, for today at five o'clock, or if that doesn't work tomorrow at three o'clock. Um, and then you say, I'll get back to you in, you know, 20, 30 minutes with an answer, you know, with the confirmation. So what you should be doing after that is number one, you want to send them a recap, right? I would send them a text message right away. Hey guys, here's my information. You know, we just talked and I would send them a video message. This is something that we talked about. Video is very powerful. You know, a quick little video message. Hey guys, it's Jerry. We just spoke to me. I just want to put a face to the name. It's so great to meet you guys. I'm going to be confirming with the seller, but I want at least you to see who you're working with. I have my phone in front of me. Um, I'll get back to you shortly. And I'm also texting you all of my contact information. Information. I'll get back to you shortly. Um, I look forward to assisting you. So right after that, after you send that text and everything, then that's when you're going to want to um, contact the listing agent or pull up the info on the MLS to see when the showings are available, right? So if it's by appointment, then you'll try to book an appointment. If there's an online thing that you got to do, you'll book an appointment there. If it's just go whenever you want, then, you know, you could just go ahead and confirm. Um, if you have to call the listing agent, you call the listing agent. Uh, what I would typically do before I show a home is I would call the listing agent and I would obviously confirm the appointment, but I would also use that as an opportunity to ask some questions like, hey, um, you know, I have a client that just reached out. They're super interested in this home. I'm going to be showing it today at three. Does that work? Yes, it works. OK, great. Is there anything you can tell me about the property or anything you could tell me that your seller is particularly looking for? Because my clients are, you know, super motivated, you know, and I would just listen to the agent, you know, and, and hear what the agent has to say. And the agent may say, oh, you know, we want the highest and best price or, you know, we want the highest and best price, but they also need a two month rent back. Or um, we also need, you know, this or that and offers are due on Tuesday, you know, so you're going to want to take that time to build some rapport with the agent. OK, excellent. So this is what you're looking for. Great. I'm going to try to do that. Hey, just by the way, you know, just introducing myself. My name's Jerry. I'm with PRG. I'm not sure if you've heard of our team, but we do a lot of business here in the area. And we always try to make transactions as smooth as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and show your property. And then I'll let you know some feedback right after the appointment. I'll let you know what my client thought of it. Is that okay? And then I would hang up from there. Um, now, if you're a junior agent still, and you're still in, in training, then you're going to want to get with your senior agent. So you're, you're going to want to do that with your senior agent, whether you're calling and doing that, but you want your senior agent involved in that transaction. Um, right from the, from the get go. Um, so Kat had put in the chat, should a senior agent go with us to the showing? Uh, absolutely. If you've never showed a home before, you should not be going out to show a home by yourself. If you've never showed a home, you need to be trained before you go show home. So you can book the appointment and then you can call your, let's say Zahar is your senior agent. Hey, I got a hot one. They want to go see this property. Um, you know, can you go with me to show it? Or what you should also be doing during your free time is you should be going on showings and trainings with your senior agent so that you're already prepared, right? This way, when you do get that hot lead, you're prepared and you know what to do when you go out and show the home or you already have some experience. So I know if you guys reach out to any of the senior agents and ask them to shadow, and that's part of your training as well, just to shadow agents, um, they're going to let you come along with them. Or you can reach out to anybody in the group, you know, just put it in Slack. Does anybody have any showings today? Can I shadow you? And you go out there and shadow them, right? Because the last thing you want to do, guys, is you got this hot lead and they've committed to, to meeting you and showing the property and you've never shown a home before and you don't know what you're doing, right? And so that's something that, you know, if we haven't said that before, you know, I'm setting the expectation now, but you should not be going on your first showings without ever have gone on a shadow or anything before. And if you're doing that now, that needs to stop. 
Um, and I will make sure we talk to the senior agents to make sure that's not happening. And we may have to make some adjustments um, so that you're to make sure you're ready when you do get a, a Zillow flex lead, you are ready to go out and show homes, you know, then handle it. Um, any questions guys on what happens after the initial call? Booking the showing appointment and expectations around when you're ready to show. Okay. Um, awesome. Awesome. So the other thing now that I'm just thinking about it out, out loud is part of going on Zillow flex. That's something we're going to have to also verify that you've showed homes before that you've gone out and shadowed before you get on Zillow flex. Cause Zillow flex moves very fast. As you guys can see, like you got someone that calls today and they want to go see a home today or tomorrow, you know? So if you're not ready, then you just book that appointment and you got to make sure you get someone on that lead that knows how to show homes, you know, but you should not be going out there unexperienced because then you can, you could basically kill that opportunity. If, if you don't know what you're doing and you're fumbling or you don't even know how to open the super key box and the client's sitting there watching you, like that's, that's all bad right there. Um, and it's a, you know, million dollar lead or whatever. Can junior agents team up with team specialists if senior agents are too busy? Um, case by case, yes, but you got to go to your senior agent first. Your senior will be the one to determine that for you. So go to your senior agent first on your squad. Hey, I got this appointment. It needs to be shown. Can you help me? Can you go out? Whatever. And then if they're too busy, then they can say, hey, I'm busy, but the team specialist can go with you, right? Or something like that. So always go to your senior agent first. Don't take it upon yourself to add someone who's not a senior onto your deal unless your senior instructed you. Um, okay, so another thing was, let's see. And these kind of all go, these kind of all work hand in hand. These three different points. Uh, one of the issues was handling too many leads and keeping track of everything. One of the issues was I want more leads, right? And one of them was I'm not available when the lead, when the lead calls. Cause if it's on a weekend, I might be already showing property or I might be at an open house and they want to go see the home today and I'm not available. And so let's kind of address all, all those in one. And that's one reason why I don't like run to go do the open house because like, if I get the lead, that's like that one lead I got, I have to work it cause I'm not getting many. So I have that in my mind too. Got it. No, and that's understandable. Um, so here's the thing guys is the purpose of an open house, the main purpose of an open house, it's kind of serves two purposes, but one of the main purposes of an open house is to get leads, right? You go, you work the open house, you get leads. But if you already have a ton of leads and you're not keeping up with them and you're not, you know, going deep with those leads, you should probably not be going and trying to get more leads, right? This is, it's just, now you're just adding, you know, more to that fire that you're not even running at a high level already. So the name of this game, guys, is not how many leads can I get? It's how many leads can I convert, right? And everybody has a threshold of how many leads they can handle at once, you know? So the average agent, you know, well, let's, let me backtrack. A highly skilled agent who understands the system, who maybe has some leverage because they have maybe some junior agents or some partners who can help them show, they can probably handle 10, 15 leads a month. Because if you're getting 10, 15 leads a month, and trying to go deep with those and really trying to build a relationship with those and doing consults and showing homes and all that, that's a lot, that's a lot of people. If you're a brand new agent or you're up and coming and you're kind of still getting your, you know, your, your foundation set, you might only be able to handle like five to eight leads a month. Cause you're just moving at a, you're just moving at a slower pace and maybe all the work is falling on you, you know, cause you're not, you don't have anybody helping you show and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just knowing like where you stand and what your capacity is. And what happens is norm naturally human beings always think more is better. I want more leads. I want more leads. I want more leads. I want more leads. And it's like, okay, 
are you doing steps one through 20 on every single lead that you're getting? And the, the just, it's just physically impossible to handle maybe more than, you know, 10 to 15 hot leads a month and really like do all the work that's required. And if you look at it on the team, no one is getting 10 to 15 deals in contract a month, right? Like our rock stars on our team might be getting four or five, six deals a month. And then, you know, some of the other agents might be getting one or two or three a month, right? Um, so it, it isn't like, it's just, it's, it's just not doable. You know, it's, it's, it's too many deals to handle. So I would say this is, if you're currently getting more than 10 to 15 leads a month and you don't have any leverage, you don't have anybody helping you show homes or you're not at that level yet where you got people you're adding on to your deals, you probably need to be paused for a little bit or you probably need to adjust your capacity and you need to come to us and say, hey, pause me because I got to catch up. And this is something um, that we're probably going to tweak to where we have shifts which allow people to get time to catch up. So trust me, this is something that we're working on. And we'll talk more about that at the quarterly meeting coming up. But um, if you're at an open house and you're out there to get leads and your phone rings from Zillow Flex and you can't go show that home within the next hour or two, you shouldn't answer the call. Just let the call go. Right. So that's the other thing I want to say is only answer the call when you can be somewhere in an hour or two. Because that's how fast the market is moving. Sometimes homes pop up and like when they call you on that home, the offers are due tomorrow or they they called you when the offers are due today or they want to go see it today. And if you can't open the door for them today, they're going to call somebody else. So. Remember, this is, the, this is now where we're thinking of abundance, right? If, if you're on flex and you're doing your job and you're following all these rules that we know work, you know, because this is what the best teams are doing, like we're getting coached by some of the best teams out there. As long as you're performing, you're always going to get more lead opportunity, right? But if you're taking too many leads and you're not performing, then I'm going to probably have to pause you or pull you off flex because you're just not performing. So it's better that you take less leads and go all the way with them, then take more leads. And then you're not doing a great job with all the leads you're taking. Right. So like to answer Alexa Lee's question, if you're at an open house, be present in that time, right? You're at an open house, like do a great job on that open house and try to get as many leads from that open house as you can, or at least try to connect with one or two hot buyers right there, you know, cause at an open house also, all you need is one, right? You know, all you need is that one or two that you're like, you hit it off with them and like, hey, let's try to write an offer on this home or let's meet, you know, for a consultation or whatever. You don't need, you know, you don't need a lot, right? If you're closing two, three, four deals a month, you're making a lot of money and you're, you're crushing it, right? So you don't need, it's not like you need hundreds and hundreds of leads. You need, you know, a handful of quality leads every month. And then that's where you're going to have to, um, you know, go into like George's point of handling too many leads and keeping track. That's where it's important that you give your leads a grade, right? You start grading your leads. You ask the right questions. You make sure that who's hot, who's not, you know, if they're not ready for a year, hey, great, Mr. Customer, we'll go ahead and stay in touch. You know, I'm going to do give you some initial information. I'm going to follow up with you every couple months. And then once you're ready, then we'll really go out there and start looking at some homes. And you move that to a nurture. Right. Your job is to take all the lead, take the leads that come in and then filter them out and then put them in a category. These are my, a, my, a, my hot ones. These are my warm ones that I need to nurture. And then these are my cold ones that are just ghosting me and not responding. And then who do you give your most time to? Or who do you give all your time to basically? Hot ones. Your hot ones, the hot ones, the ones who are like, they're ready to meet. They're pre-approved. They're ready to go. They want to buy a home. You know, they're showing up. They're showing up to the consults, you know, all that stuff. They're showing up to the properties, you know, and you should, you should be having, you know, like we talked about in the meeting the other day, you should be having a solid five, at least, at least five that you're consistently working on. Like I got five hot ones in my pipeline at all times. 
you know? And then I'd rather you pause and you tell me, hey, pause me, because I got I got at least five or six hot ones I'm working. Let me get one of these and a couple of these in contract, and then I'll ask you to put me back on. Right. And that's where you got to gauge your business because it's like a water faucet, right? Like if I turn the water too slow or it's just dripping barely, there's not enough to fill your cup. If I turn it like medium where it's coming out like a good flow, you're going to fill your cup and you'll be able to drink and you'll be able to drink and stop. If I put the water on full blast and your cup's overflowing, you're not going to be able to drink all that water. You're just going to be drowning, right? And we don't want no one to drown. We want everyone to take gulps, put their cup down, take a gulp, put their cup down, right? And constantly like replenish little by little, right? If you guys are catching my analogy there. So that's where you guys also need to take ownership of your business and be self-aware and say, hey, I either need more opportunity or I need less, or I just need to call the people that I freaking got in front of me, right? Sometimes we're not doing that. We're not calling the people that we got in front of us. We're looking for more, but we like the ones in front of us, we didn't really go deep or we didn't ask all the questions or we didn't follow up enough times. So hopefully that addresses handling too many leads, keeping track. You need more leads if you're not available. Is there any other questions around that part? Handling your leads, needing more leads. Because the first thing I'm going to do when someone asks for more leads, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what you got already. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Um, the other thing too is that we do get reports on who's answering their phone. Like I get a report on how many times your phone rang and how many times you answered. And what I can tell you is that for the majority of the team, they're just not answering the phone all the time. So if you need more leads and you, you know, you can actually handle more leads, you just got to have your phone near you all the time and you got to answer it more, right? If your phone's ringing and then you, you're, you keep missing them because your phone's in the other room and you're doing something else or stuff like that, then you're potentially missing that lead that could have went to you. Um, the other thing too, is that Zillow flex. Um, does anybody know what voice over IP is? It's basically like uh, internet. The calls come in through like the internet, like Wi-Fi calling basically. So if you're on Wi-Fi, if your phone is on Wi-Fi and your phone, uh, a Zillow comes in, because it goes through Wi-Fi and it goes through internet, you're going to get that call faster. So you want to keep your Wi-Fi on. So if you're connected to Wi-Fi, your phone will actually ring quicker because that's the way that Zillow Flex comes in because it all comes in through the app. Right. So it's based off, you know, Internet and service. But uh, if you're out like on the road and you're like your Internet, your service is spotty or whatever, you may miss some of those calls or your phone may ring later than the person. Let's say Charles right now. He's in he's in the office and, you know, Nestor's on the road and they both get the same call. Charles might get the call faster because Charles is on, on Wi-Fi and then Nestor's phone might ring like three seconds later. And then by that time, Charles already answered it. So that also plays a role is being connected to Wi-Fi, um, you know, and, um, and also just having your phone in front of you and answering the phone. Questions guys. Let me open up, open up the floor to questions, comments, feedback. Nothing, nada. Okay, I have a couple more points here and then we'll wrap up. Um, so one of the points that you guys brought up earlier in the survey was clients having agents already, the home's not available or the client's not ready. Aaron, you've converted like three or four that, are, that said they had agents already, right? Yes. Challenge accepted. So challenge, challenge accepted, right? So number one, guys, if you weren't here last Thursday and didn't listen to Aaron's um, interview that I did with her on our Zillow Flex training, it's on the YouTube channel. And 
I will put the link in Slack right now. You need to watch the training from last week where I interviewed Erin because we talked about how she won over that client that did that had an agent already. And Erin has won several, won over several clients that have have had agents. Erin, what would you say is like a number, like just real quick, give me a one or two minute tip on how to win over clients that have agents already. Um, you know, like to be honest, like all the things that you, that we can do as real estate agents, like any really any realtor can do, right? Like we can all send properties or show them properties, but it's just like bringing your value. Like it's just what you do that's going to make you different from anybody else, right? Like your personality, I mean, and the connection you can make with the the client or any like outside advice or tips or or value you can bring into the transaction. So just being able to show like how special you are as a person really because all the other stuff it's all it's all the same right wherever you go yeah that's really it right okay that's some good insight like building the connection like one of the what i heard was building the connection and bringing your unique value to the to the client um and just think about it like anybody oh i, I play golf right so tiger woods is like you know big name in golf, right? Um, if you give me a golf club and you give Tiger Woods a golf club, it's the same golf club, right? We can give us the same exact golf club and he'll do something way more with that golf club than I will. Simply because he's able to bring a lot more skill, value, whatever you call it, right? Performance to that golf club. Same thing, it goes like when someone says they have an agent, right? Just because someone says they have an agent, that does not mean that that person cannot work with you that means that you're now going to have to show why they should work with you. Right. So what now we got to go a little deeper than that. Right. What's the reason why an agent, why someone chooses to work with an agent? So let's go around. Why do you think people work with an agent? Why does someone choose to work with an agent? Real quick. My boyfriend always says, just because there's a goalie doesn't mean you can't score. <laughs> hey, there you go. Right. I like that. I like that. But what's one of the reasons, Aaron, why someone would choose to work with a particular agent? Just one. Let's go around the room. Uh, trust. Trust. Okay. Trust is one of them. Um, someone else unmute themselves, please, so you guys can participate. What's another reason? Communicative. Oh. What was that, Connie? Uh, you communicate well with your client. Communicate well, right? So you're effective at communicating um tyler knowledgeable. knowledgeable market knowledge if you're local you're going to know that market better yeah so local market knowledge your knowledge of the game your knowledge of the process what else uh, the agent's dedicated to work the client so commitment you show they show commitment right they show their dedication their work ethic right What's another reason? There's a big one that you guys didn't that you guys didn't mention, a, a huge one. Building rapport. There you go. Bam. Building rapport, your connection to the client, how you connect with them. Right? Like they have kids, you have kids. They play soccer, you play soccer. Um, they like Teslas, you like Tesla, right? Like whatever it might be. Everyone can find some way to relate to somebody, right? How do you find a way to relate to someone, right? So there's something called, uh, there's something called FORD. Has anybody heard of the FORD acronym, F-O-R-D? Like when you're trying to build rapport with people? Oh, it's like, um, wait, the forum? It's FORD, F-O-R-D, -F -F um, it's an acronym. I know what it's, um, Family, occupation, recreation, um, and then I don't know. The one I learned was dreams, different. Dreams, right. There you go. Dreams, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. What does that What does that mean, guys? It's like the what's most important to the client, and generally what they're going to talk about first. So when you're getting to know someone, their family is the most important. It's the easiest thing for someone to talk about. Then their job, what they do for fun, what their goals are. Yeah, what their dreams and goals are, right? So 
to build a connection with someone, and this is something that you guys can all learn how to do, is you just use the Ford strategy. You talk about those things, right? So if they have a family or they have kids or you show up and it's, it's a young couple, you know, or maybe they're from another country or whatever, you start asking them about their family, about their origin or whatever that might be, right? Oh, hey guys, are you guys from the area? Or hey guys, you know, how old are your kids, you know? And that's where you spark conversation. And then naturally, as you spark that conversation, you're going to find some sort of, you know, commonalities. Maybe they have two kids and maybe you were, uh, a, you, you have one sibling, right? And you were, uh, your parents had two kids. Maybe you don't have kids yet, right? But they do. Oh yeah, you know, it's funny. You know, you have a boy and a girl. That's like me and my, my sister, right? We grew up and it was just us two. And then you start talking about that stuff, right? Or maybe they're from, you know, the same country as you, or they're from the same city as you or same neighborhood, right? So you start talking about like their family and their origin, and that's a way to spark up conversation and you build connection and rapport with someone, right? And then you can talk about job, right? Your occupation. So F-O-R-D, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams, right? Occupation. Hey, what do you guys do for a living, Right. Well, we work in tech or we work at Tesla or we work at Facebook. Oh, you know what? That's crazy. My last client I helped worked at Facebook or my cousin works there and you guys get to talk in and, you know, you know, or if you work at Google and how spoiled they are at Google, they have all these, you know, perks and everything, right? You start talking about stuff. And the next thing you know, they're starting to feel like connected to you. Like they know you, right? Because there's commonality, Right. And then you could talk about recreations. What do you guys like to do for fun? Or why this, why this neighborhood? Is there anything in this neighborhood that you guys like? Well, we like going biking or we like the trails or whatever. We like going hiking. And then you figure out where you fit into that equation, whether it's, it's something you do personally or something you know or know of. And then the last one is dreams, right? Which dreams can also be goals, right? What is your guys' goal in this? You know, stuff like that, you know. Where do you guys see yourself? Can you see yourself living here? Now you're talking about their goals and their dreams and their aspirations, right? And what happens is by you building this rapport, by you um, asking these questions, they start to feel a connection to you. What that does is that creates trust, right? So rapport creates trust, right? The more someone can relate to you, the more trustworthy you can seem to them in their eyes, right? In their mind, you know? So we talked about, you know, when someone has an agent already, well, if, if I have an agent already and maybe I met him through an open house, but we haven't really got that deep on talking and then I meet you and then you're talking about my family, my occupation, my dreams, my recreation. And it turns out you're from the same city or you went to the same high school that my kids went to or that I grew up in, whatever, right? Now it's like, well, I feel a little more connected to Aaron than Joe from Redfin, you know? Also, Enrique, like you have to remember the clients that are inquiring on Zillow, like they're actually putting in their information, their phone number, their name and having someone connect to them. And like when you think about all of your clients that you have really good relationships with that, you know, are only working with you, how many times do those people just send you Zillow listings like they're not putting in their information to have someone reach out to them. Right. So anybody who's actually like physically putting their information to the computer to have someone else reach out to them about the property, it's, it might not be the closest relationship to another agent, right? Because you guys don't have those people, you guys don't have clients doing that to you when you're working really well with them, right? right. They're just going to send it to you and you set it up. Yeah. So uh, what Aaron is trying to say, those of you guys that didn't catch that, is if, if they say they have an agent, but then they're going on to Zillow and punching in their information so that you can call them, what does that tell you about the relationship with their agent, right? A lot of times in a client will use the excuse that they have an agent because they don't feel connected to you and they can't see themselves doing business with you. Because trust me, just because uh, there's a saying buyers are liars, right? Just because uh, a buyer says they have an agent, it's not always 100% true. That's just a quick way to get you out of my hair, right? Oh, yeah, I have an agent, even though I don't have an agent. Trust me, people are trained. They know what to do, right? You know, the same way when, uh, have you ever walked into a clothing store or a shoe store and you went there to buy a pair of 
for shoes. And then they, the salesperson comes up to you and says, hey, can I help you? Oh, no, I'm just looking, right? But Moss used to, you know, work at Shoe Palace, right? That happens all the time. Definitely. It's right? almost a natural response. It's a natural response. It's a default response. And then what happens after they browse around a little bit? Hey, do you have these in a size 10? Right? And then they end up buying the new Jordans for like 300 bucks, right? Remember, when someone says they have an agent, sometimes that's like them saying not interested when they're going into the shoe store, right? Maybe you came off a little, right? But then you start talking to them or whatever, and the next thing you know, boom, they're, they're buying. So what you can control, right? You can control how much value you bring. You can control like, like all the things we talked about, trust, right? You build trust by building rapport. You build trust also by by showing your credibility, by bringing value when you show up to the, to the presentation or to the showing. So let's say, let's give two scenarios, right? I get a Zillow flex. They want to see the house in an hour. Boom, boom, boom. I scramble. I make it happen. I show up there in an hour and I show up and I'm speeding and I'm rushing, you know, cause there's traffic. I get there. I open the door for them and I come with nothing. It's just me talking, right? And I show them the house and then, you know, maybe I'm a good talker, but I'm trying to get them to, you know, work with me. And maybe I just didn't hit it off with them, right? Like I didn't ask enough questions about them. I didn't build rapport. I was just trying to go straight to like, hey, offers are due tomorrow on this one. We need to move fast. And this is why you need to buy this home. I sound like a freaking salesperson, right? Like there's no trust there. There's no credibility. I sound like I'm just trying to close them. That's agent A, right? And then there's agent B, I'm going to just use Aaron. Aaron shows up before she shows up. She prints out comps of all these properties of the property that they're looking at. She prints out a market report. She brings five other properties that are similar that are available. She brings, you know, prints out our buyer presentation. She brings her business card. She brings some snacks. She asks the client if they want Starbucks on the way there. She shows up early because she booked the appointment strategically even though they wanted to see it at five she booked it at six because she knew that six would give her enough time to prepare and get there and show up early and be waiting for the client instead of the client waiting for you right and then when she meets the client she starts asking them questions using the ford strategy f-o-r-d about their family occupation next thing you know they're laughing and then she goes, hey, by the way, I, I printed out these market reports because it's really important you guys understand the market. This is my job to bring value to you and make sure you're informed. And she goes over the market with them and she shows them the comps of what this home could sell for. And then she shows them five other properties that are available. And then she takes them in the driveway for the 10 minute consultation. Who do you think has a better chance of closing that client? Aaron, all day, right? And that client... And guys, I didn't tell you this, but that client has an agent. So to agent A, right? If it was me and I just did the half-assed job, oh, you know what? Thank you, but we have an agent. To Aaron, because she wowed them and she built rapport and now they feel connected to her and all these different things. Well, we kind of met this agent at an open house, but he's not really our agent. Actually, Aaron seems a lot better to work with. And, you know, I feel more of a connection and she's really sweet and she was here and she showed us all this value and all these different things. And man, like she looks like someone that I think is going to really help us get our home. That's the difference guys. That's the difference between being thorough and being proactive and using all the things that are in your control instead of just going by default and showing up and like whatever happens, happens, hoping you get the, you could convince them, right? Major difference in how agent A runs their business and how agent B or Aaron in this case runs her business. So when clients have an agent already, and remember you, you're not only gonna do this when someone says they have an agent, then you're going to put on your best performance. No, you're going to do this on every single client because that's the way you run your business. 
you run a high level business. You are a top performer, right? You always improve. You always make tweaks. You always think, how can I get better? How can I show up next time and be more prepared, right? And if you just take that mentality, you're going to win over way more clients. And that whole, I have an agent excuse, it's going to become less and less and less and less. Um, the home not, did that help? Was that helpful for anybody guys? Anybody listening? Anybody in the room? Yeah, I know one time a guy said he had an agent, but he kept open communication with me. And I was like, I'm still going to show because I had nothing else to do. Like I already had set that time. Like I didn't have my kids. I knew it was like, if I get a, you know, a call, I'm, I'm, I'm going. My neighbor knew she took the kids. Well, his agent shows up, but I was there first and I had all the data ready. And so then, oh, hi, nice to meet you. Hi. He's like, oh, my agent just, came. you know, when he's talking, he likes me. We've been chit-chatting about, I can't wait to see the house. He's like, oh yeah, that's my agent. I said, oh, okay. So the agent, I said, good. I said, well, I'm pretty sure she's not going to have this. So I'm going to leave it to you because you're going to need this. This is the data. This is our current sales. And as she's walking up, so go ahead, you can have it. I, I made it for you. Then he texts me later, like, oh, I'm so sorry. That was so awkward. Like, I didn't realize, like, you know, you're an agent too and blah, blah, blah. But he worked with her. Yeah, and that's going to happen, right? That's going to happen. But here's the thing is, is there's no guarantees in this business, right? So you, you, whenever you get the opportunity, you got to go shoot your shot and you got to go shoot your best shot right and if you do that enough times you're, you're gonna win you know so if you have the ability and the availability to go out there right and the capacity and you're able to go out there and shoot your best shot and be prepared you're gonna run into some once in a while where maybe they do really have an agent you know but that doesn't mean you don't go out there and you don't practice your shot and you don't shoot it and you don't give it your best attempt and you know we've there's a lot of there's a lot of examples on our team where they started off with one agent and then a couple of weeks later they called us because that agent was dropping the ball. Or you, know, you Aaron had that, that one. You could go and find another buyer, right? By by being there, you can find another buyer that is curious about that. So I know that that exists. I use the opportunity to network with the listing agent to see if she had any other ones coming on. You know, it wasn't like a total loss, but it happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And each, each time you go out there, you're refining your skills, right? And, you know, in the example, the Aaron's recent deal for close to 4 million, that client had an agent in the beginning and several weeks later, now she's in contract with Aaron, right? So it just goes to show guys that you got to just keep pushing forward and keep, keep delivering your, your best. Uh, okay, uh, one more thing and then we'll wrap up. Um, so the other two points were, the home's not available that they want to see and the clients are not ready. So if the home is not available, let's say client calls, they want to see one, two, three main street. And you're like, sure. You know, I'll let me confirm the appointment. Boom. You, and then you, you hang up, you call the agent, the agent's like, no, you know, I got 12 offers already. We're going to take an offer by tonight. Um, what do you do? That's going to happen guys. Just right off the bat, know that that's going to happen. That's part of our, uh, that's part of our, uh, that's part of the job, right? It's part of the market where people are going to inquire on a property that's not available. But I want you guys to remember that Zillow Flex isn't client calls, they inquire on this property, and then they're going to buy that property. That's not the way it works. It's the same thing like an open house. When a client comes to an open house, the chances of them buying that actual home is very, very slim. So you have to already know that this is the game we're playing. The game we're playing is the house that they inquired on. That's what got them to show up. You know, that's what got the phone to ring. Now, if you can get them in that property, great. But you should always assume in your mind that I'm probably going to be showing them some other homes. So I want to be prepared and proactive on that. I want to have at least three or four other homes. I want to already say that on the call, right? Hey, guys, sure. I'll go ahead and set this appointment for you. I'll call you back to confirm. By the way, um, I'd like to understand a little bit more about what you're looking for, right? Is this the only area you're shopping in? Have you seen any other homes? Were there any other homes you wanted to tour? Um, because our market moves fast, you know, so usually we want to have a few options to compare, you know, just depending on this one. 
And then when you say that, they're going to tell you, well, yeah, I'm looking for a three bedroom, a two bath. I'm looking for this price point. Great. So I'm going to confirm for this one. And then I'm also going to pull up a few more that match what you're looking for. And then we can add those to the tour. All right. And then that just needs to be part of your practice every single time. I would never try to go out and only show one home. Because, the, because if you do that, then you're like putting all your eggs in one basket. And we already know the way the market moves that it's a slim chance they're even going to get that home, even if they did like it. They might be competing. So if you have a few more options and you already have some time, you're already out there and you show them four homes or three homes instead of just that one, now you've built some connection with them because you're showing three homes. You spent a lot more time. You guys are chit-chatting and talking. And your likelihood of them working with you and not ghosting you is, is a lot higher. Um, the last part, guys, just clients not being ready. If a client is not ready to buy a home, you know, either because of finances or just the timing's not right, there's nothing you can do to speed that up. All you can do is provide information and ask questions. But like, if I just, if I don't have the money, I don't have the money, right? But, but that doesn't mean that's not a good lead. That means it's just some, something that you're going to have to keep working on, right? So I would still take that lead. I would still service them. I would ask questions to understand why they're not ready now. And then I would also propose like, hey, well, what if, you know, we were able to find you, you know, a good deal now, would you want to know about it? Or what if, uh, you know, maybe I can have you talk to my lender. They have some other options, you know, for lending. Maybe you might be able to get pre-qualified sooner than you think. You know, I'll have them come on the call with us. You know, so this is now where you're, pro you're providing solutions and you're asking questions and you're understanding why they're not ready. And you're figuring out how you can, you know, create a solution for that. And um, if at the end of that, they're still not ready, then it just becomes a nurture, you know, but you want to exhaust those options at least. And you want to at least see what you can do before you just kind of throw in the towel and give up. And let's say after that, they're just, they're just not ready. They need to save more for their down payment. Okay, great. You know, at least now you've talked to the lender. Now you need, now you know how much down payment you need. Um, when, when do you think you might be ready? You know, six months. Okay, great. Let's stay in touch. I'm going to keep you up to date on what's happening in the market over the next six months. You know, I'll, I'll check in on you periodically. I'll send you some properties. So at least you can, you know, know what's going on and what homes are available. And then, you know, when it gets closer to six months, then we can really start looking at this again. And then your job is just follow up with them every couple months. That's a nurture. And that's really the game, guys, is you take these leads in, you figure out where they fit, hot, warm, cold, and you try to fill up your hot bucket and your warm bucket, and then you nurture these guys, and then you service the heck out of the hot ones, right? And then you just constantly replenish. And then your warm ones turn into your hot, and it's a cycle, right? That's really what it is. And that's how you keep a healthy, healthy pipeline. Um, time is up, guys. We covered a lot of stuff today. Um, really quick, in the chat, what was your biggest takeaway today? Just write it real quick, and then we'll wrap up. What's, what's one thing that stood out for you during this session? I see Ford, Aaron says Ford, Charles says Ford, Connie says Ford. What else? Everyone on the call, what stood out for you? Just quick, quickly write it in the chat. What's one takeaway or one thing you're like, oh, okay, that's something I gotta do, I gotta tweak. Making sure you're on Wi-Fi for Zillow calls. Focus on the hot clients. Also check on your nurtures to not lose out on potential business. Yep. 
You need to be working at least five hot ones. Don't answer Zillow call if you're at an open house. Yep. Don't answer, answer calls if you can't show the home within two hours. Yeah, and that should just be a protocol, right? Because there's your phone's going to ring again. So if you already know, like, you can't really do, do anything in the next couple hours, let someone else grab it, you know, and you're going to get another opportunity. Brian, Kat, Alessandra. Who else? George, what was your takeaway? Don't lose hope even if they have an agent. Go deep with what's in front of you before chasing other squirrels. Yes, sir. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Thank you. Hope you guys got some nuggets. If you need anything, Alessandra said, follow up. Remember, guys, this stuff, I know I'm going over, but there's, I got to make this point, right? If you want to be a high performer, guys, you don't only, you don't only learn and you study like during these sessions, you got, you now got to go out there and implement and practice this stuff. That's just the bottom line, because I said a lot of things today, right? And this is so many things that you're not going to take all of it in, right? So you got to pick those one or two things that you say, okay, you know what? Those two things, like, like I really felt those. I really think I need to implement this, or I do really think I need to change it. And you focus on that and you start going deep on that because you're not going to be able to do every single thing that I said today. And it's about just getting 1% better every day, right? Just little inches, inches every single day, and they add up, they add up. So take that one thing that you got to now go implement in your business, or you got to work on, or you got to make a little adjustment or a tweak. And if you got to write that down, because remember, we get, we get pulled in 20,000 different directions a day, write it somewhere, put it on your screensaver. You know, this way, every time you open your phone, it says, follow up with my leads, follow up with my leads, update my statuses, and it's just a constant reminder. Put, put a notification in your phone. Write that shit on your mirror in your bathroom when you're getting ready. Like, because a lot of times it becomes out of sight, out of mind, right? Like, okay, it sounded great. Enrique did a great job of presenting this to the, to the team. And, you know, because I've practiced, right? Like, I, this is what I do. I train and coach people, right? So I know I can present it well. But are you taking it in and implementing it? And that's where it's on you. And that's the hardest part of the game is implementation. And it's just because you forget or something else becomes priority. So if you really want to make a difference in your business, find those one, two, or three things that you really need to work on and put that shit everywhere. So it's a constant in your face reminder and just attack it every day. And you'll, you'll see in, in 30 days, you'll see some, some, some progress. You'll see a change. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Have a great day. Let me know if you need anything. Peace. Thank you.